to his house. Okay. So how shocked and excited were you when you learned that you, in fact, were Lady Whistledon? I was so excited. I mean, it's exciting enough to get cast in a Shonda Rhimes show. You know, I would have done any parts in it. And then to find out it was like that part just took it to a whole other level for me. And then in season two, going in, knowing the audience knew and knew that we'd get to go like behind the scenes with her and find everything out. I was thrilled. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, truly. All right, so we end season one with this sort of cliffhanger, you know, Penelope's narrowly escaping near the Queen's guards, you know, between like Eloise and those townspeople and the Queen. How is, you know, Penelope going to sort of evade everybody in season two and be on the, uh, you know, the defence in this season? I think you see how stressful it is for her and how difficult it is for her, because it requires her sneaking around an awful lot, which has become incredibly like more difficult having Eloise there because Eloise is attached you know to her hip so it yeah it becomes really difficult really really quickly yeah truly um so I want to talk about sort of this duality in your beautiful character and by the way oh my goodness you play her so so exquisitely well and I spent the last eight hours so (laughs) oh thank you so oh, so wonderful. Um, so Penelope's really living this double life. She's so reserved and sweet and quiet with her family. But you know, Lady Whistledon is a badass. So how is it for you playing that aspect of this character? It's so much fun. I think you know it, what's interesting with her is she's such a bag of contradictions. You know, in season one we see her as this like sweet shy girl, but then when you find out she's been writing all this stuff, you go, oh, there has to be this other side to her because you can't write all that stuff and not have a little bit of it in you. So it was so fun to get to actually play all that outright and play that businesswoman side to her and then still play the sort of bratty teenager at home and play like the silly young girl with her friend. It was just great. Yeah, truly. Um, So the other sort of burning question, ah, love, what is in store for Penelope? Is there any hope for her and Colin? I think so. I like to believe so. (laughs) I think, yeah, I think she, she's completely devoted to him thinks he's the most perfect man in the world so i mean i i really hope they will get together i have a good feeling about it (laughs) okay wonderful that gives me hope i'm like colin why don't you see this (laughs) (laughs) um speaking of beautiful things fashion is so front and center in this show it is so gorgeous your costumes are so elaborate i would love it if you could speak to that but first if i may say yellow (laughs) <laughs> Do you love this color? Because we see you in it a lot. A lot. It's funny because in the beginning in season one, I knew well the characters meant to hate yellow from from the offset, and I was like, it's good. I like it. It's it's great. And then I think I've probably worn about <clears throat> seventy or eighty yellow dresses at this point. Am I now? I'm like, are, is the yellow done? Like, are we? <laughs> can we move beyond it? Are we ready? You know, season three, I'm gonna go in very strong and be like, I think we've had it. I think we've come. We've ticked the yellow box. And then we can move on now. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You may just have ticked the yellow box, but always. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit about the Kardashians, and and I understand that they were something of an inspiration for the Featherington family, and that Kim is dying to come to a fitting. Has that happened yes. yet? No, not yet, because we were su- everything was on super COVID lockdown. We had barely any visitors to set. Um, but yeah, they were, Ella Mirajnik, who designed the costumes for season one, said, you know, think of these these girls as the Kardashians of Regency London. You've got an ambitious mama and three daughters. So it was crazy then when the actual Kardashians watched and loved the show. It's wild. Yeah, truly. And, you know, speaking of the Kardashian parallels, you know, you and your castmates were thrust into the spotlight really, really quickly. How are you sort of handling all that fame and attention? I mean, it, it's so strange. I think we sort of, we experienced it sort of online first, which doesn't feel very real. It, you just sort of see numbers on a screen. And then we went back into production, which meant, you know, we have to be super careful and not really go anywhere for like seven months. So it's only really now that we're stepping back out into the world and really seeing it for real. And it's quite overwhelming sometimes. You're like, oh gosh, you know, 82 million, you hear that and you go, that sounds like a lot. But then when you see real people, you're like, oh, okay, whoa, this is real. <laughs> Yeah, that is, in fact, a lot. Um, and what about Kate Middleton? I've heard that maybe she is also a fan of the show. Any intel there? I've heard rumours. Well, I know there was one conversation where someone referenced Bridgerton. She was on a Zoom and then she started laughing. So I'm like, that's a knowing laugh. That's a knowing laugh. I feel like the Duchess, she's she's into it. <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. 